How you doing, everybody? Let's take a look at Glass, the latest film from writer-director M. Night Shyamalan, starring Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, and 23 James McAvoy's. This is, of course, the movie that joins together the Unbreakable and Split universes and takes place shortly after the end of Split. After rescuing a group of cheerleaders and getting into a lengthy fight with The Beast, David Dunn is arrested along with Kevin Wendell Crumb, and company, and they are committed to a mental institution. And here, the good doctor Ellie Staple, played by Sarah Paulson, tries to convince these two that they are not actually superheroes, they just cray-cray. But that's not all. It turns out this asylum also houses one Elijah Price, aka Mr. Glass, who plans to use the beast for his own nefarious purposes. And in the world of movie reviews, this is the part known as the plot summary. If you haven't seen the movie, you're not going to get that joke. And if you have, you probably just rolled your eyes so hard that they did a complete 360. Shyamalan is a filmmaker that I would describe generously as hit and miss. I think it's fair to say he has quite a few more misses than hits. And Glass is a sequel to two movies that I would argue are actually hits, Unbreakable and Split. I'm sure there are many that will disagree with me on that point, and that is fine. I still liked him. And the revelation in Split's post credit scene that these two movies occupied the same universe was pretty interesting, and I actually wanted to see where Shyamalan was going to go with this. I should have known better. I really should have. For a second, I forgot who I was dealing with. Now, I know Shyamalan has claimed that McAvoy's character from Split was originally supposed to be in Unbreakable, but was cut, and honestly, I have no reason to doubt that, but I would argue that is irrelevant. As is, Unbreakable and Split were two very different movies, and David Dunn and Kevin, and the others, still feel like they belong in very different movies, and putting them together here really doesn't work. It certainly doesn't help that a good chunk of this movie is Shyamalan lecturing the audience about how comic books work, because he read one once, and apparently now thinks he's an expert. I assure you he is mistaken. And please understand, I am not claiming I am a comic book expert. I am not. I am a casual reader at best. But even I know the difference between a limited edition and a limited series. Shyamalan does not. And while I could not name off the top of my head what year Action Comics number one was released, if I was going to make a movie and include that little tidbit of information in said movie, I would at least Google it ahead of time to make sure I got it right. But that's okay, Shyamalan, you do you. As far as the acting goes, Bruce Willis is putting forth the minimum amount of effort. Clearly, he checked his ability to give a shit at the door. McAvoy, on the other hand, is possibly putting forth too much effort. What he is doing in this movie feels less like a performance and more just like an acting exercise. Though, I will freely admit I did kind of have fun watching him. And then you have Samuel L. Jackson, who just outshines everyone in this movie anytime he's on camera. Even during the scenes where he's catatonic, he still manages to pull that off. He's just, he's fantastic. They also brought back Charlene Woodward, who played Elijah's mother in the flashback scenes in Unbreakable, which was kind of cool. Though it is a bit weird to see her playing Elijah's mother when, in real life, she's younger than Samuel L. Jackson. And the old lady makeup they used was not good. They also brought back Spencer Clark, who played Bruce Willis's son in the original movie, and now that he's all grown up, is still playing Bruce Willis's son. And that was kind of awesome. And they brought back Anya Taylor-Joy from Split. I'm not sure why. There wasn't really anything wrong with her performance. It was fine, but the way they used the character just did not work. Basically, every main character in this hilariously understaffed asylum with the worst security on the planet, how this place hasn't been shut down is beyond me, needs to have someone to care about them. David has his son. Elijah has his mother. Kevin, etc., has his former victim. Someone thought this would be a good idea. And of course, there's the twist, because it's Shyamalan. And it's terrible. Because without giving too much away, until we get to the twist, 
the entire goddamn movie, and specifically Sarah Paulson's role in the movie, does not make a lick of sense. The purpose of a twist is not to fill plot holes. And boy, was the final battle underwhelming. In this age of huge blockbuster superhero movies with these massive final battles with tight choreography and special effects galore, we got two guys leaning against a van and punching each other. I get the feeling Shyamalan had something bigger in mind, but didn't have the budget for it. But even if he did, I have a hard time imagining anything he could have come up with would have made up for all the crap leading up to that final battle. So, this is the part of the review known as the conclusion. Glass kinda sucked. McAvoy was fun to watch, and Jackson is amazing as always, but they just got buried under bad writing and Shyamalan's ego. I really would not recommend paying any money to see this. Maybe when it hits cable, if you need something for background noise, sure, go for it, but that's about as far as I'm willing to go for this one. And that's all I have to say about Glass. Till next time, take care.